Rather, that time was an enemy of the prophet who was fighting against the prophet at that particular time. But he still said this is what he calls us to. To only worship one God and to not ascribe partners with him in worship. To relieve off all the evil ways of our ancestors. He orders us to pray, to speak the truth, to be chaste, to protect our private parts, and to keep good relations with our families. This is Islam. This is what that man Muhammad was calling to. Heraclius asked the translator to convey to, convey to them the following. He said, this is Heraclius, who was a non-Muslim. He said, I asked you about his family, and your reply was that he belonged to a very noble family. In fact, all of the prophets and messengers came from noble families amongst their peoples. I question you whether anybody else amongst you had claimed to be a prophet before him, and you said no. If you had said that someone had claimed to be a prophet before him from amongst your people, I would have thought that this man was just following the previous person's statement. In other words, he's just saying what someone before him from his people said. Then I asked you whether anyone from his ancestors was a king. And you said no, none of his ancestors was from amongst a king. And he said, if, he, if you had said that, that he came from the lineage of a king, I would have thought that he was only trying to take back his family's kingdom. I would have thought he was only trying to take back his family's kingdom. I further asked whether he was ever accused of telling lies before he said he was a prophet. And you said no. Now listen to what Heraclius says here. So I wondered how a person would never tell a lie about daily things, about things that go on amongst mankind, but he would invent a lie against Allah. A man who was never known to lie in the affairs of the, of the world. He was never known to lie about things amongst the earth. Now all of a sudden he's going to come and lie about the creator of the heavens and the earth. This goes against the very nature of Prophet Muhammad. This goes against his very way, what he was known to be upon. Until I mentioned to you earlier that he was known as Al-Amin. That he was known as the trustworthy one. Until the Prophet said to the people of Quraysh, of his tribe, if I was to tell you right now that there was an army coming over the hill right now, would you believe me? And they said, yes we would. We have not known you to lie. So when, one of, when a person rejects Islam, when they reject Islam, when they say, I don't believe in Islam, what they are saying is that their Prophet, Prophet Muhammad was a liar. There is no other way to get around it except to try to say that Prophet Muhammad was a liar. But this is rejected and refuted by the history of Prophet Muhammad himself. It's rejected by the statement of one who was not his companion at that time, who was an enemy to the Prophet during that time. He was not known to tell lies. And even this man Heraclius, who was not a Muslim, he was a Christian from the Roman Empire, even he understood the nature of the human being, that if a man is not known to lie, he's known to be truthful and to be upon that which is correct, now all of a sudden, he's going to start lying about the creator of the heavens and the earth. It doesn't even make sense. It's not even logical. I just want to mention something about the gentle nature of our Prophet Muhammad, because as I mentioned, again, so much so in the media, and people have to be careful with what is disseminated in the media, and understood that the media is controlled by a few who have an agenda. They have the ability of editing these pieces that they do. They have the ability of, uh, of um, interviewing the people that they want to interview. It's amazing that sometimes, for example, if a person wants to do an article, a journalist wants to do an article on brain surgery, when they go to the hospital to do an interview, they normally would interview a surgeon, a brain surgeon. You wouldn't find them interviewing an orderly down in the emergency room. But yet when one of them wants to ask about Islam, you always find them interviewing people that don't have much knowledge of the religion. And they do that for a reason. They're trying to get a spin. They're trying to get a certain statement out of that person so as to spin the story, to get a misconception and misinterpretation of the religion of Islam. And we should ask the, the people who interview people, why don't you interview scholars sometimes? Why do you always go to common people when you interview them? Because these people have been trained in journalism and they know who to go to and who to ask questions of. At any rate, Prophet Muhammad... One time, a Jew had passed by the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, and he gave the greeting, Assalamu alaikum, poison or death be upon you. Instead of saying peace be upon you, he twisted the words and said, death be upon you. Prophet Muhammad merely said, wa alaikum, and unto you the same, and unto you the same. I'll say no more than that. So, when the Prophet's wife heard this, she became upset that someone would say such a thing to her husband and to the Prophet, uh, death be upon you. So she became angry and began to 
lash out at this person. The prophet calms her down. He stops her and he said, it's not like that. We should not do this like this to his wife. And then she said, did you not hear what he said? And the prophet said, did you not hear what I said? And he said that verily, mercy and kindness is not entered into something except that it beautifies that thing and is not removed from something, uh, mercy and kindness, is not removed from something except for it disfigures that thing and makes it ugly. So this was the character of Prophet Muhammad. This was his character, gentle nature. A very kind and gentle man who was truthful and upright in his affairs.